Now let's look at the mid-range machines from Brother. They would be those two Pocket Jets. I have Pocket Jet PJ673 and I have Pocket Jet PJ723. The difference in between these two models is the model PJ723 have no wireless, have no Bluetooth options. It connects to your computer with a cable and then you can print things out. The model PJ673, it's with the wireless LAN option. I never had luck connecting printers wirelessly, so I also didn't succeed with this one. I've seen a bunch of videos, look it up, there's a bunch of tutorials, a gentleman named Paul Talbot from this tattoo show. He's pretty expert on these printers. There's a lot of ways how to set up, little tips and tricks how to use them. I did not succeed. There is some sort of battery on this one, but it doesn't work without it and it feels super light. So I'm not sure if it's actually a battery or it's just some dummy to be in a place. Anyway, I bought these machines secondhand. Maybe that's why I didn't succeed with wireless connections and all that. The first one I got was 673. I got it pretty cheap from somebody who stopped tattooing and I was just opening the shop and I needed one then and luckily that gentleman was selling it and we managed to get it and it worked for quite some time just fine. Then I upgraded to 723, but that was also secondhand purchase and I bought this one just because I was buying a bulk of stuff. One tattooist was selling all sorts of older tattoo machines that he doesn't use, power supplies, and there was also this printer. I got this one and then I started to use this one more because I had more problems with this one in terms of burning design to stencil paper. So with this you had to make them super light and mess around with all those densities and all that stuff. With this one it seemed less hustle, this one seemed less picky, I would say. They are pretty small and they are pretty lightweight, yet when you get the whole package it's not that small and not that light as it might seem. With this one you need a USB cable and it's the older type of USB cable. I'm not sure what this type is even called. I'll look it up. It's maybe USB-A? And then you have this power brick, which looks like it's not even original. This is 12 volts at 4 amps. And as I learned from one of the videos, that the original power adapter that comes with it is at 15 volts at, and 4 amps. And that's apparently too strong because these are meant to be like fax machines. And if you get a smaller power adapter, the one mentioned in the video was 12 volts 2 amps. This one is 12 volts 4.16 amps. But the idea is that it can be a bit too strong and that's why it's burning paper to it. So if you sort of make a downgrade on power of power adapter, that could help with that burning stencil paper situation. The idea why I mentioned this is that once you combine this and this, it takes some space and it's not that light anymore. And it's kind of like the previous machine that we looked at. Now I will show you how it works. Dongle life, because it's USB. This also looks like it's not even original cable because it's been scraped off just to match the plug because it's a bit in there. Now let's print the same designs. And the trick with this one is because it always prints it mirror. That's why one of these even have a label stick on it. Did you flip the image? Because that's the thing that you might forget. And again, sometimes it's just a waste of stencil paper. Sometimes you might have realized that you should have flipped it when it's too late. I'll show you with the full sheet and that's where I will show you also the downside of it because most likely it will show. If not, I'll print another design. Again, you can cut it off or you can use the full sheet. Then you open this part up. Now let's print a big sheet and I'll show you what's the downsides of it. Printing full sheet. It did the sound and remember that you have to flip the image. Let's print this amazing design. That's shout out to Christian who made it playing with the Procreate and testing out brushes. Image, transform, flip horizontal. There's a lot of dark black areas and it will be a full sheet. So that's the both things that this printer may not like. Go to file, print, see if it's perfectly the whole page and here is one trick if it burns things to it let's start with printer default on density press print oh wrong printer 673 we check the placement and there's advanced settings at the moment it's printer default for density so let's see how that goes So 
So that did not go well. I have all this situation now and all this mess. Boom, and the purple hands. Speaking of being wasteful, now I'll show you what changes when you cut this part off. And on a computer, one thing you can try is duplicate layer. Unsee the first one and you can reduce opacity, which might help in some situations. Feed this thing into printer. This is the other approach. As you can tell, I'm not a fan of these things. I have them, I use them. This one is connected all the time. For some pieces it can be handy, but... And then with this button you can sort of push it in by a bit, align it, file, print, and now let's go to advanced or in the Photoshop you just go into printer settings and let's put it on something like 6. And let's print now. And now you can push on this button and it just rolls up. The downside also for printing big sheets is that if you get it close to edges it starts to fold and then that could leave all these sort of lines like imprints and that shows as an empty space on a design. On this beautiful masterpiece it wouldn't matter, but on some designs with a lot of details and then you have those sort of cracks in the middle that can mess up your experience. Let's waste some stencil paper. And also that burning part to it shows if you have to print, let's say, two sheets and piece one piece together, let's say it's a chest piece or back piece or something, and every time you print it, it also kind of warms up a bit or something and then it would, in the places where it would burn to it, it might like sort of stretch because there would be a little hiccup in the speed that it goes and it burned to it and then you can't match those two pieces because one would be a slightly bigger and then you have like say a tiger that goes off a bit in the middle of face and next thing I want to demonstrate where it can be not so good if you press and hold this button it would feed the whole paper through it that's useful when you stop printing or if you feed it with the yellow paper in let's say we have this geometric design it does not like when a, there's a full line with black because then it's i guess it's the whole thing heats up and then it burns the paper to it see how it will perform with this one file print tuka 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 advanced six print this one went quite well but if you have those lines that tend to burn you can also rotate image a bit so the straight line doesn't go like that but it's a bit off so it doesn't have that thing where to burn to it and looks like reducing density to six solves quite a bit of a thing and there's the lightning effect this started what I pulled on it a bit and this is just for no reason there. They do work, they compact ones. It's also like a printer. If you get the, the special paper for them, A4 term, thermal paper, it's the type that kind of like a, in a shop where they print receipts, same type of printer, but obviously this one is A4. So if you go to some convention or some shop where you have not been to, you can use this thing and then you know that you have your own printer and your own stencil printer. So in that regard, it's a fantastic unit and on uh, paper it prints as is you don't have to flip anything because it doesn't transfer on the second sheet so let's do this beauty again file print whatever hold it and this beauty is done Again, shout out to Christian for this amazing design. We should put it on a t-shirt or something. And you can see all those little pixels in there. But still, if you need somewhat reference or just a print design to know the size, you can use this as a regular printer if you have the right paper. And a little thing that we noticed with Carlos that for some reason we had this situation where we couldn't print one design out. It was this big bold line tiger. It was misaligning because we needed two sheets. For some reason the 
stencil paper that is the this one the green one which is actually not that green it's more like minty color it's this one for some reason it burned to it less if nothing works and you tried everything have these around maybe that will be a lifesaver in some situation i don't know explanation to it but that's a fact that's what we found out and that's what worked worked both for these stencil machines and for the previous no-name cheaper one as well now for these there are newer models out and they have some special kind of tattoo button which is more for stencil like designs uh, there's wireless there's bluetooth so if that's a factor that you wanted bluetooth and you want to print from different devices you can connect those for wireless one and bluetooth one you can connect it to ipads to phones print wirelessly from your computer so if you want that wireless life then that would be one for you i bought these second hand and they are a bit pricey they're like 450 to 6 or even 700 euros so converted to dollars that's like 5 to 800 and i think it's a lot of money i think it's a good printer for specific use if you know you want that wireless life or you need something compact for travels for like printing just design so you have this two-in-one unit then yes I would see a point of investing into it for me I wouldn't pay that much for this type of machine I would either buy the really cheap one or save up for the big one for my favorite one these two it wouldn't work for me in my mind I wouldn't want to pay for them as much as they cost but for some scenarios I think it would be perfect for these is the longest learning curve how to feed the design in how not to end up looking with all purple hands how to do a little computer tricks if you can stay away from edges because that's where all the folds and all the nasty stuff happens they work i would say uh, if you're looking into these get one second hand and they go for a pretty decent price you can get them for around 200 ish euros at least in denmark's market this one was 1500 krona and this one i got in some bulk deal that's out there they, they work i just think they are a bit too expensive for what they are as for using of stencil paper obviously you can feed full sheets but if you have some smaller designs then you can use also smaller bits of stencil paper some leftovers we have this piece here cut a bit like this off and i cut a bit like this off and let's go to the rose design file print and let's say you need it not that big that's a pretty small one there you have to work from this corner you put the thing in, it grabs it, print. And we have a small design in a corner there. And now the trick is also if you have just the piece of size of the design and you put it in and nothing happens so the button that detects where the paper is is roughly around here. If you put it a bit more to the side then it would grab it boom then you have to start to guess where to place it to have it right where your printer sheet is huh i managed to do it there you go so you can use small pieces of stencil paper like this and have smaller designs printed out downside if you press it to the wrong printer and send it to the wrong printer it saves in memories they might start to print once you connect the printer let's see if they sent this one i'm still printing the beautiful snack design and i have no idea how to cancel it i tried to press press all the buttons so sometimes you just have to admit your loss and just feed it through multiple times until it prints out the whole jazz will we have a rose in there as well yeah a little rose also printed through okay now we're done this printer on my laptop i have some weird stuff going on print ah it works on my other laptop when i print it starts to blink yellow i don't know what's the reason it blinks yellow on data but then i just press the paper sheet button once and it accepts it and prints it through for me pj723 it had less issues with burning stencil paper and all that stuff uh, this one was my first one not sure if, if it came with battery i never managed to connect it wirelessly i tried just for sake of doing it but it, it's, it's next to works laptop it's there 
it works. I use it less because I have the bigger machine now. But this one was a lifesaver when I opened the shop. I got it secondhand. I got a good deal. And I think it works. It's the biggest learning curve. How to figure out all the little bits. Remember to flip the image. Remember the densities. Uh, layer opacities. A lot of messing with all this like folds. Especially for bigger pieces. It's a nightmare. It goes perfect. One, one part burns to it. It starts to get all those lightning looking things and then it's an annoying thing obviously depending on what style you work sometimes it's fine sometimes you can deal with it sometimes it's a pain in a boom boom i don't have one of those echo tank printers i was looking at them and i was looking into them and i read on some forums printer itself it's not as expensive ink costs as much as printer does i think you have to look for some specific sheets of paper because we are out of the times when you have to use A4 paper to stick a stencil on, so you would look for some thinner, softer paper for it to print. And I read as much good as much as I read bad, because it's a printer, and printer is the most annoying piece of technology to have in a shop. If something goes wrong, it's always the printer. It kind of stopped me. I've seen a lot of good words from a lot of realistic artists. They print out these one-on-one -on -one kind of stencils, and they are very happy. As a machine, it often you read that it just goes out for no reason all the inks and all that so i don't do the jobs for it and i don't see reason to buy it they are out there if you're specifically looking onto those you can find a lot of information and these are the ones that i use and i have actual experience with them and i work my way through the ups and downs and all the little annoying parts 